LasVegasDiscount.net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. Travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. LasVegasDiscount.net. LasVegasDiscount.net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit LasVegasDiscount.net. This is Brock Lesnar, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yo, hi, this is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to listen to Fight Net Radio. Me, Harvey Oswald, what's your name? I know how am I supposed to know you? This is Frank Shamrock. We're listening to Fight Net Radio. Hi, this is Mia, the Knockout St. John. You're listening to Fight Net Radio, and there's no way I would ever touch Lee. This is Chuck Jack Vivadell. Hi, I'm Stephen Bonner, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yeah, you're listening, you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Everybody, welcome to Fight Net Radio, <laughs> where Lee's burning every f***ing bridge there is out there. All right. Hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on Fight Network. But it's a fact. You know what I mean? I, how dare them even to challenge me in these fighters? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? With their primitive boxing skills. You know what I mean? They're as good as dead. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lee Hunish, Andrew Labashe, bringing you the wonderful world of boxing. Fight Net Radio is the oldest posted weekly podcast on the subject of boxing, fighting, mixed martial arts, you name it, we've been covering it since 2006, when it was me and a handful of people on the World Wide Web trying out this weird thing called podcasting. Uh, It has landed us a a CBS gig, an ESPN gig, an NBC gig, and ultimately getting thrown off of a CBS gig, an NBC gig, and an ESPN (laughs) gig. And for a short period of time, I was fired from the internet. That was pretty impressive. Uh, I have been doing this show for quite a long time with my friend Andrew Labache of Northern California fame. Yes, Andrew, the writer, uh, and also the family member to the biggest bulk of our listener. How are you today, Andrew? Ah, doing good, Lee. My, to- my team is on life support. Oh, no, I'm your hoping- team is done, dude. Oh, will you shut up? For those of you listening, there's no inside joke to it. You might be new to the show. Andrew is a Raider fan. So I'm going to say this. I'm also an AFC West guy. Uh, The Raiders and Denver are both dead. Give me a break. You're both dead. Must win. Yeah. Game by game, Lee. Now we got to take it game by game. Dude, you're playing Philadelphia. You're playing the number. No, no, no. We play the Dolphins Okay, okay, yeah, right. You have the Dolphins and... Denver we play has, Philly. We play Philly coming up here, though. That that's shortly coming that here. Is shortly, no joke for the second half of the season. Yeah. Uh, for longtime listeners, you know that uh, Andrew is in Northern California, which makes him strictly a Raider fan. I am an LA fan, uh, longtime Charger fan, and I was also blessed to get the Rams, who decided to actually put together a team. Since the first time since my childhood of going out to the old Anaheim Angels Stadium, we used to watch the Rams. Yeah. Is Donald Trump going to stick it to the NFL? No. Right. You no. heard you see his new tax reform takes away the, the um, bonds for being able <laughs> to use them to pay off uh, stadiums. Yeah, I I see that, but I Are get what big? he's trying to do. It's just a negotiation tactic. I'm sure he's going as extreme as he can to see if he can pressure the owners into doing something about it. Right, right. We'll see if he can. I don't know if he can. I really don't know. I don't know if you can... Look, those are... The thing that makes our country great is the fact that I can get on this show and say all the crazy shit I want to say and record it and publicly say it. That's the beauty of this country. Not get arrested. (laughs) And not get arrested. Like, really, literally. I can say whatever I want about whomever I want, record a show, blast it out, create a social following on the topic, put it on social media, 
and stand behind what I say, right? doesn't matter what it is. I could be all for Islam. I could be all for white power. I could be for no, no black deaths today. Whatever. You can do and say whatever you want in this country. I don't know if that's what it's called, but okay. Well, Black Lives Matter. Forgive me. There you go. All right. There you go. All right. African Americans, back away from your podcast. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> but the point being, you can say what you want, you can record what you want, you can do what you want. That is the beauty of this country. So if the NFL players want to do what they want to do, then it's up to the owners, the people who pay their paychecks, I to decide them. what work conduct is. And I if they decide them. that you're no longer kneeling during the national anthem, then my advice is don't put them out there during the national anthem or fire or suspend them and see what the repercussions are. But we live in a completely politically correct society. And, you know... The shit will be on if they do it. Just saying. Hi, we're also trying not to cuss on this show, and I know I just dropped an S-bomb, but it felt like I needed to put that point in. Andrew's yeah. family wants me we'll to stop know cussing by, We on will the show. know by Thanksgiving if it, if it ends. Yeah, I guess we will. But with all that said, we do talk about boxing on the show. We, we had to stretch shows. it out, people. We, we have to stretch it out. You know why? Yeah, that's oh. true. There's a uh, two shows on Fight Night Radio each week. Embarrassing. Yeah, it, it was bad. There, there were two. We do two shows on Fight Night Radio. Uh, one is done midweek, features Bobby Capucci, our resident uh, bookie. Uh, we call him Bobby the Bookmaker. He is a former ticket jockey, as he likes to refer to it. Uh, for one of the hotels. He knows his lines. He knows his betting. This Saturday, come meet Bobby Capucci and Lee Honish in Las Vegas at Tough Enough. If you're a fan of the show, you listen to the show, whatever it is, if you're in Vegas, direct message me. I'll buy you a drink. Okay, we're going to be at the event. I think I might even have a couple of tickets for the event. Uh, I don't know if they got my credentials worked out. <laughs> I asked at the last minute. Happens. But I know the owner. Um, uh, and for many of you who followed the show for a long time, Yes, that's the organization I fought at. So that's we're going to go there. Randy Couture's uh, Veterans Day event. Plus, we're also going to document Bobby live, right? We're going to try to turn $100 into $10,000. Oh, nice. We're going to try a 10 to 1 hit on Saturday and a 10 to 1 hit on Sunday. We'll see how it goes. And that should do it with all your news. Oh, of course, if you're coming to Vegas, go to LasVegasDiscount.net. You heard it at the top of the show. You hear it at the end of the show. Can't stress it enough. LasVegasDiscount.net. So that this show doesn't cost me any money to produce for you people. How did we do last week? Let's look at the numbers. Let's see if anybody wanted to uh, talk about our topic last week. Uh, Shall we? I'm looking at our click rate. And... How did we do? Hmm. hmm, Andrew. How did we do last week? Oh, that's the iTunes link. Nobody likes iTunes. So how did they listen to the show last week? There is Fight Net Radio from last week. Uh, we did okay. We had a few people listen. It wasn't uh, the most popular episode. I'm going to be honest. Not the most popular time right now. And with the matchmaking we seen yesterday, Lee, mm. Mm. HBO's uh, Eddie Hearn debut didn't Sky Sports debut. How are we going to put this? I don't know. Didn't end. Didn't go too well. That almost seemed like what was that guy's name? Trent. What was that contender's Trent name? Trent Broadhurst. Seemed, I actually yeah. I watched it. Trent Broadhurst. It, uh, it almost it seemed was, like. He, I don't know what they were trying to do. I mean, I saw the buildup, and I saw the blue screen of Lampley, and <laughs> clearly those Lee, two were not in Monaco. Did he kick a leg over like he was just kicking back on the beach? Yeah, he, or, got, like, he got paid. Did that really happen? <laughs> I, I know he was trying to be sarcastic to the ref that waved it off like he was saving his life. I mean, come on, ref. It was round one. Okay, well right. let's start. Well, let's start right uh, there with our discussions for today. We will talk about boxing of last week or Saturday night. We'll start off with HBO, covered by the one and only uh, Jim Lampley and the dude who likes to smack his bitch up because she must be a bitch <laughs> for 
for taking oh a my punch. God. It really? I thought Max... I was keeping clean. If Max <laughs> Kellerman hit me, oh, I would God. put his lights out. Okay? I'm straight up saying it. Max Kellerman, if you're listening or anybody knows him, put his lights out. Put him out. Choke him out with his own shirt. He's going to sleep. <laughs> He's going to sleep. He's a bitch. He's a uh, bitch yeah, for hitting yeah. his wife. That's oh. not even allegedly. He said it. You can't be more un. Uh, you Ugh, I hate him. I hate you Max Kellerman. Can't Kellerman. be more upset than the victim, though. And she's not upset, she's... Lee. So we got to get over it. Well, she's a bitch. She no. Oh my God, Lee. Okay, we've had this discussion on the show before. Okay, and for all you men listening, go ask your women. If I were to hit you in the heat of passion, what would you do? And if their response isn't, I would pack my bags and leave, or I would get a we... shovel and hit you in the face. We have discussed this. We came yeah, we to the conclusion <laughs> that Max Kellerman probably hit worse than a girl, and she didn't even feel it. Remember? That's probably why she forgave him. She probably felt sorry for it. Like, serious? That's all he brought? Fuck out of here. Let's go, let's uh, go out to eat. Dimitri Butterball. All right, HBO. HBO last night put on a fight. It was Matchroom Boxing. It was Eddie it was Hearn, bad. who I did not see anywhere in the scene. It was Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman on blue screen. Right. And it was Dimitri Butterball. It was uh, weird seeing the Sky Sports microphones. Am Lee I supposed on to know more? Am I supposed to more know about Bivol at all? I mean, other I don't than know. that's what I was trying to figure out. I mean, I I follow on social media. I follow uh, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing on both Twitter and Facebook, so I get a pretty good feed of all their fighters. I'm telling you, up until this fight, I didn't know Jack Diddley shit. That's about right. Dimitri Butterbean. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know crap about these guys until like this week. And then I just had it plastered in my face like I should know about the WBA Light Heavyweight World Championship. The only thing that depressed me more about this fight than the actual outcome, and we'll get to it in a minute, was the fact that these guys were six foot one and six foot two and 175 pounds. And I was trying to think to myself, how can I cut my weight to get to 175 pounds? Of course, it helps that they're both in their 20s, but I digress. Dimitri Butterbean Bivol crushes Trent Broadhurst in one round. Our news today is coming to you, brought to you by Boxing Scene. Why are we promoting Boxing Scene? Because that's where Andrew pulled his stories from. Yeah, Casino yeah, yeah, yeah. de Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, yeah. WBA light heavyweight champion Dimitri Butterbean Butterball, 12-0 with 10 KOs, retains his title in a first round knockout of Trent Broadhurst. Bivol became the full WBA regular champion after holding the interim belt prior. Uh, the prior full champion, Badu Jack, who I didn't even know was still in boxing, vacated the title Great after being about. ordered to face Dimitri Butterbean Bivol in a mandatory defense. If I can get it to trend that his nickname is Butterbean, I'm going to be so happy. Bivol's last saw action in June when he stopped uh, Spiro Agnew, former vice president of the United States and dead for many years. Oh, I'm sorry, Cedric Agnew. Uh, coming into the fight, Broadhurst had won 13 fights in a row until he just basically faced a buzzsaw. Uh, at the end of the first round, Bival landed a huge straight right hand, and that was the end of the fight. <laughs> Wasn't that huge, though? <laughs> I'm going to say Man, that, that because, honestly, it looked like a one. jab. It looked like a straight right jab. Okay, I admit that he fights traditional style, but his punch was no stronger than a jab. It was right on the money. It almost seemed like everyone forgot that fight was supposed to end in round one and just got it over with in the last five seconds. It was pretty dumb. <laughs> it's, hey, bang, bang, over. What? Like, what just happened right now? Like, that ref ran in there waving it off. Like, I... uh, It was pretty awful. He had money I... on something. Okay, yeah, so... But... Hey. I, I was at my Ooh. daughter's piano recital last night, and Andrew was respectful. Andrew yeah. knows the rule, much like I do, which is if one of us is not watching the event and we're recording, can't talk about the event because then you can't watch the event. So uh, I got home, and I watched the fights. I actually watched them this morning. So I did the Showtime card first, which we'll talk about in a minute. So I'm fast-forwarding, looking for a reason to stop on the first fight and looking for a reason on the second fight and ultimately getting to the third fight, which all three of them, I couldn't really find a reason. But then I went over to the HBO fight. I was fascinated with the HBO fight. Like, the production, 
why it even made HBO.